Hello everyone, my name is Moises Hernandez. I am an AI Dev Tech Engineer at NVIDIA and today I'm going to present the work we have done for optimizing BERT inference on AWS GPU instances. I have divided this presentation into five sections. First, I will give an overview of the BERT model. Then, I will give some details about the optimizations we have implemented into MXNet and Gluon NLP. I will show the performance we achieved with these optimizations on AWS GPU instances. I will show how to reproduce the results. And then I will conclude with some other optimizations we are working on for upcoming MXNet and Gluon NLP versions. Let me start giving an overview of the BERT model. On the left, you can see the architecture of BERT. After tokenization, we have an embedding layer followed by a stack of uh, encoders. In the case of BERT-based, we have 12 encoders. And at the end of the model, we have an activation layer, which depend, depends on the specific task that the user wants to perform. This is typically a softmax or a dense layer. 95% of the computational time in inference is spent on the encoder, so we will focus on, on these layers. On the right, you can see the architecture details of the encoder, where we have a multi-head self-attention mechanism. We have two element-wise addition and layer norms and we have a feed-forward neural network. The first thing the encoder does is uh, three uh, linear projections to produce query key and value tensors. We have different heads in bare model, and each head will have its own projections. So this happens independently. Then each head will apply the tensor mechanism independently as well, where it multiplies query by key, it normalizes by the projection size, then it applies softmax and multiply by the value, as you can see in the equation. Here on the right, you can see more details about the encoder architecture. At the bottom, you have the self-attention mechanism with the projection, the query and key multiplication, and the multiplication of the output of softmax and value. And then we have an output projection. The multiplication of query and key and the output of max and value needs to be done independently for each head and therefore we need a batch matrix multiplication. At the top, you can see the feedforward neural network where we have one fully connected layer followed by a yellow activation and then another fully connected layer. Those fully connected layers are composed by matrix multiplication and bias addition. So if we take a look at where we are spending most of the computational time in terms of operation types, we can see that more than 50% is spent on matrix multiplications. This may change depending on the batch size and sequence length, but in general, most, most of the time is spent on gems. Then other four uh, relevant operations in terms of computational time are layer norm, softmax, yellow, and bias addition. Focusing on the matrix multiplications, in the feedforward neural network, we have two big gems. Then, for projecting query key and value, we have a joint projection where we do everything together and therefore we have an also a big gem 
we have a medium size gem for the output projection after the attention mechanism and then we have a bunch of small gems for multiplying que query and key and the output of softmax with the value. Now I'm going to give some details about the optimizations we have implemented on MXNet and GluNLP for improving the performance of bare inference on GPUs. For those of you who are not familiar with GluNLP, it is a deep learning framework for natural language processing. It is built on top of, of MXNet. It provides uh, NLP models, datasets and examples, and it includes uh, an implementation of BERT model. It also includes, includes datasets and scripts to train the model to fine tune it and to perform inference. The results that we will present here are based on MXNet 1.7 and on Glue on NLP version 0 0.10. You can find more information about Glue on NLP uh, on this link. Here I'm listing the optimizations we, we included into MXNet 1.6 and 1.7. We use as a baseline one, MXNet 1.5. We included into MXNet 1.6 uh, a set of optimizations that allow us to achieve up to 70% speed up. And into MXNet 1.7, we included another set of optimizations that allow us to achieve up to 2x speed up compared to MXNet 1.5. I'm going to give some details about each of these optimizations. So in the case of Softmax um, Bias Edition, we implemented uh, two CUDA kernels. One of the strategies we followed for having an optimal uh, kernel was to vectorize the memory loads and writes. So because we are performing inference in FP16, instead of uh, loading independently each FP16 element, we can put together several of these elements and then load them together. So for instance, if we have 128 FP16 elements, we can load them with 32 loads, loading them as FP64 elements. This allows us to reduce the number of loads and write instructions and increase the bandwidth utilization. Apart of that, in the softmax, we made that we made it numerically stable by normalizing with the maximum value of the vectors. And since we need to compute the maximum value and the summation of all the values, we need to access several times to the elements of the vector. So instead of going to global memory several times, we use persistent storage. So the strategy here is to go to global memory once, store in shared memory these elements, and then reuse the, the elements from shared memory. Then for computing the maximum value and the summation, we need a collaboration between threads because there are a bunch of threads collaborating for computing the softmax of each vector. So for doing that uh, optimally, we use SAFL extractions and we use CUDA registers to communicate, to communicate the threads. Also, uh, we need to apply a mask in the sequence Instead of applying the mask before the softmax and then do softmax, what we do is to integrate the masking mechanism into the softmax kernel. So each thread 
will check if its element mm, should be masked or not. And then we avoid to have different operations. We also have optimized the multi-head attention mechanism. As I mentioned before, we have a joint projection for computing query key and value. And then for each attention head, we need to multiply query by key and the output of softmax by value. In total, we have batch size by number of head matrix multiplications. In MXNet and for GPU for computing gems, we use Kublas, which is a linear algebra library in CUDA. But for computing batch gems, we need to have the different batch dimensions contiguous. So in this case, we need to have batch size and number of heads to be contiguous. And as you can see on the right, the joint projection reduces a tensor where these dimensions, these axes are not contiguous. So we will need a transpose. However, we can avoid those transposes. We can rearrange the input. We could swap the batch size and sequel length. And then we can store the weights in the projection in an interleaved way. So instead of having all the queries for all the heads, all the keys for all the heads, and then all the values for all the heads, we can interleave query key and value for head number zero, then query key value for head number one, and so on. And as you can see on the right, this strategy will produce a tensor where batch size and number of heads are contiguous and therefore we can directly call to a batch gem. We just need to use an stride to indicate where each tensor starts, query key and value. We only need one transpose before the first encoder layer, which is for the input, and that's all. In MXNet 1.7, we added the option to compute completely in FP16 the matrix multiplications. Before, it was possible to use FP16 for input and output data type, but the internal accumulation was happening in FP32. Now everything can happen in FP16, and this will force to use tensor cores and therefore will boost the performance. There is also a new functionality in MXNet 1.7 which allows to customize a graph. In the case of BERT in the feedforward neural network, we have a fully connected layer followed by a yellow activation. The yellow activation is composed of element-wise operation, the one so in the equation. And the fully connected layer is composed of a matrix multiplication an element-wise bias addition. So we can customize our graph path in order to fuse the bias addition and the yellow activation. That means we reduce the number of global memory accesses because we can access the elements once, compute all the operations, and then write just once at the end of the, all the operations. We also use the custom graph mechanism to compute offline, to prepare offline the interleave weights for the multi-head attention. So that doesn't need to happen at runtime. Now I'm gonna show the performance we achieve with these optimizations on AWS GPU instances. Here I'm showing the latency for BERT inference, so the lower the better comparing uh, the G4 uh, instance versus the best CPU instance we found, the best CPU compute instance we found, which is C5 24X large. Uh, 
I'm showing latency for different batch sizes on the x-axis and for different sequence length with different lines. Blue is CPU, green is CPU. In the case of CPU, we use int8 data type. And in the case of GPU, since we don't have available yet or native MXNet uh, int8 version, we use FP16. GPU is able to uh, run BERT inference in less than 4 milliseconds for batch size 1, whereas CPU takes more than 12 milliseconds for batch size 1. And uh, we achieve up to 4x speed up when comparing GPU to CPU. Here I'm showing the cost of uh, serving 1 million requests. So in this case, we compare again GPU, G4 instance versus three different CPU instances. We use for CPU, we use M5X large, C5X large, and C524X large. In all the cases, CPU is running in int 8 and we use the best possible configuration for the number of OpenMP threads. We saw again results for different sequence lengths and in general GPU is 15 times better than the best compute uh, CPU inst instance, which is C5X large. Focusing on sequence length 128 a typical one. On G4, it costs 20 cents to serve 1 million requests, whereas on C5X large, it costs more than $3. In these tables, I'm comparing uh, two GPU instances. I'm comparing G4 instance which uh, contains an NVIDIA T4 GPU versus P32X large instance, which contains a single V100 NVIDIA GPU. I'm comparing latency and cost for 1 million requests. For latency, we can see that uh, for a small batch sizes, uh, we obtain almost same latency this is because the computational demand is pretty low. Uh, and as we increase the batch size, the computational demand increase, and we start to use all the computational resources that, that V100 has. So V100 achieves up to 3x better results compared to the G4. Then, in terms of uh, cost, we can see that for a small batch size, it's much more efficient to run BERT inference on G4 instances. And even for large, large batch size, it still makes sense to use G4 instance, although uh, the cost is more similar compared to P3 2x large instance. We have recently published a blog on AWS where you can find details about how to reproduce these results. You can find pre-fine tuning weights, so you don't need to pre-train or fine tune the model. You can just test inference directly. Uh, but here on the right, you can see the steps you need to reproduce these results. Basically, you need to uh, install MXNet 1.7 and clone uh, Glue and NLP version 0.10, then export a couple of environment variables, and then you are ready to run the deployment script. While MXNet uh, solution for BERT inference is uh, better than other frameworks such as 
TensorFlow or PyTorch. I would like to mention that NVIDIA also provides an optimal solution on TensorRT. So here I'm comparing uh, TensorRT results in FP16 versus MXNet uh, FP16 results. Uh, in general, uh, TensorRT is about 30% better than MXNet solution, although I have to say that uh, MXNet is taking into account all the overheads in the end-to-end -end, uh, deployment. But importantly, uh, TensorRT provides an int8 solution, and this int8 solution offers up to 70% improvement compared to the TensorRT FP16 solution. Okay, now I'm going to talk about some other optimizations we are working on. In MXNet 1.8, which will be released soon, uh, we included CUDA graph. CUDA graph allows us to hide uh, overheads when launching CUDA kernels. So in the figure, you can see that uh, at the top that the CPU launched the CUDA kernels and then those are executed on the GPU. It may happen that those kernels uh, are very small uh, because there are low uh, computational demands. So in those cases, the GPU is most of the time idle, waiting for the next kernel to be ready for, com for being computed. So what CUDA graphs does is to record those uh, CUDA launches uh, the first time they happen, and then if you iterate over the same kernels a uh, second time, uh, CUDA graph will launch uh, all of them in a single operation. So when, when they reach the GPU, uh, the GPU has ready all the kernels to, to be computed. This is relevant in the case of uh, bare uh, inference when we use a small batch size since on the, in those cases, uh, the kernels are very small. So here I'm showing preliminary results uh, using CUDA graph in bird-based inference. Uh, I'm, here I'm using a P3 2x large instance with a V100 GPU. On the left, uh, I'm using second length 20, and we, using CUDA graph, we achieve up to 20% improvement uh, in latency. We reduce the latency by 20%. On the right, the same experiment, but for second length 128, we achieve up to 10% improvement. As the batch size increase, uh, CUDA graph is start to be less relevant. So this is important, uh, it's significant for small batch sizes. Here I'm profiling uh, the case of uh, bare inference with batch size 1 and sequel length 20 to try to understand what's happening. So I profile with and without CUDA graph. At the top is without CUDA graphs. And as you can see, there are gaps in the CUDA kernels execution. And this is because uh, those uh, kernels are still being launched at runtime. At the bottom, uh, however, uh, there are not gaps or they are very small because all those kernels were uh, launched uh, in advance. We also have tested CUDA graph uh, running BERT inference on the new uh, Ampere A100 GPUs. Uh, so now on AWS uh, we have available these GPUs on the P4 uh, instances. Uh, here I'm comparing uh, G4 versus P3 versus P4 instances. Uh, on P4 I'm using a single GPU. Actually in all these instances uh, I'm using only one GPU. And in the case of uh, P4 we achieve up to 2x uh, speed up compared to the P3 instance. And it's very interesting that uh, 
in many cases we are able now to run BERT inference on MXNet uh, uh, in less than 2 milliseconds. So other future work and things we are working on, we are working on uh, optimizing the new NumPy API that will be available in MXNet 2.0. We are working in optimizing the new transformer-based models that are coming uh, with the new Gluon NLP. We are uh, uh, making available uh, int 8 version for native MXNet. Uh, where we quantize all the gems of the model and um, preliminary results, so 30% uh, improvement. And um, we also are working in a MXNet to TensorRT conversion for the for the BERT model. To sum up, uh, we have present here an efficient solution for performing BERT inference on uh, G4 GPU instances. We have seen that uh, with a set of uh, MXNet optimizations, we can achieve up to 2x improvement for performing BERT inference tasks. Uh, we have seen that uh, G4 instances uh, offer much lower latency than the uh, best CPU compute uh, instance. On average, G4 DN X large is 3.x times better than the C5 24x large. And G4 is able to run these uh, inference, tasks, inference tasks in less than 4 milliseconds. And finally, uh, G4 uh, DNX large offer the best cost per million uh, request, 15 times better than C5X large. Thank you very much for your attention.